NFTs, they are so hot right now. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how I got from this sketch to this video, which auctioned on Super Rare as an NFT. Now, if you don't know what an NFT is, go ahead and watch my other video where I dive deep into the topic. So this video is not really gonna be a tutorial because I don't really know what I am doing in 3D programs, so don't expect to learn anything, but I am gonna show you the general process of how I got from point A to point B. So. If that sounds like fun to you, then let's get into it. So the original idea I have in my head is that there's this godlike hand that appears in space and it creates a galaxy. So I set up my camera and I film a bunch of reference shots that I'm gonna use, I'm gonna bring them into After Effects and I'm gonna rig up a hand. Cause after all, I've rigged up hands before, no big deal. So I bring in the footage and then I have the brilliant idea why don't I just use this footage as it is? So I can rotoscope this out, add some effects on it. And as I'm doing this, I start to realize, okay, this footage, it's really poorly shot. I can't rotoscope it. I'm having a really tough time with this, but it's almost like a prototype. So I don't think that this is gonna work anyway in After Effects, rigging up a hand in a 2D program. And I start to realize that this needs to be done in 3D. So I come to the conclusion that I need to learn a 3D program. Now, I've used Blender before briefly months ago to make this bouncing eyeball animation, but I basically forgot how to use it completely, so it's kind of like starting over from scratch. And so I looked up a bunch of tutorials on how to make and rig a hand, and I don't love watching tutorials, which probably sounds crazy because I make tons of tutorials, but I much prefer going into a program and just messing around with it and seeing what happens. And then if I get really stuck, then I go on Google or YouTube and try to troubleshoot my problem. And here's the thing about Blender. It feels like it hates you if you don't already know how to use it. There's a million different menus and modes and sub menus and tabs everywhere and it's so confusing to navigate. Like if you wanna make your background transparent, it's a random checkbox under a film tab in a random menu and God forbid you click whatever the f this mouse is and you can't get rid of it. There was one day I was trying to model this brain, which looks like a butt, and I was trying to close out viewport windows and I spent 20 minutes just opening up new windows, trying to close out the other one. And just so we're clear, I'm not hating on Blender. I think it's awesome. I just wanna be better. So if anyone can point me to like a good class or something that can help me out, I would appreciate it. I already did the donut, I need something else. So anyway, since it was really obvious at my level, I was not gonna be modeling and rigging up a really nice hand to use. I pulled a pro gamer move and I stole my wife's credit card and purchased an already rigged up hand model on Turbo Squid. So this made the whole idea much less daunting to try to figure out, but it was still really difficult because simple things like animating these bones, I would constantly lose them and spend hours trying to figure out how to get back to the pose mode to try to be able to animate them again. And eventually I animated the hand in a way that I was happy with, but I actually lost the bones completely and was never able to uh, get back to it. So I couldn't even change this hand animation even if I wanted to. But it's okay because I'm happy with the way the hand animates so it's not a big deal. So after I animated the hand, I thought, why don't I bring that into After Effects and just do the planets in there? Because after all, I've animated planets in a 2D program before and they came out awesome. So I tried it out and the results were not good. It looked terrible. So I said, okay, Nick, you know what? You had a vision, you gotta stick it through. We're gonna do this whole thing in Blender. So back into Blender I go. We're gonna do the plants there. We're gonna add in some nice spicy camera work and some lighting and it's gonna be great. A really awesome technique I learned for texturing is called bump maps. This is when you use the black and white values from images to create depth. So I grabbed some images from Unsplash that would look cool as a planet surface and then use these for the texture and the terrain for each planet. 
Then I got this really bright idea that the hand should like come out of a cloud, right? Like that would be really cool. So I started playing around with meta balls, which are like these glob like balls that morph together. And this looked pretty awful. I played around with this for a while and then this turned into like a wormhole thing and I still didn't like it. So I showed it to my wife and then she told me that both the cloud and the wormhole looked awful. And I'm really grateful for this because then I cut both the cloud and the wormhole and then this turned into this Tinkerbell moment, which was this kind of little central particle that came out of the hand with all these other particles that explode out of it, which became kind of like the central focus for everything to rotate around and the camera to focus on. And I think that uh, it's really became like the thing that tied everything together. And this is a huge part of my process. I don't really plan things out. I don't really think things through. I have a really loose idea of what I want to do. And then I try a bunch of stuff out. I throw a bunch of stuff at the wall and nine things don't stick, but one thing does. So I do too much at first and then it doesn't look good, there's too much stuff going on, and then I pull a bunch back. But once I kind of simplify and clean it up, then there's like, it's kind of like polishing a turd, right? But in a good way. Uh, or like chiseling away a rock, kind of. When you kind of pull back some of the elements, then you have something that's kind of nice underneath. But I think it's always good to try out a bunch of ideas and then if they aren't working, you can understand why they aren't working and maybe they lead to something else. You can connect the ideas, you can connect the dots to something else that will work. Then I spent an extremely long time tweaking the camera angles and the camera movements until there was something really dynamic and fluid that I was happy with, something that could loop well. And there's actually a moment in the render where the particles do like this second nice burst moment. And that wasn't intentional. I don't know why or how it happened, but I was never able to reproduce it. And I wasn't actually finished with the animation at this point, but since I couldn't reproduce it, uh, I just called it at this point. I liked this burst so much and I didn't want to lose it, so I just had to go with this render as the final. So then I imported this final sequence into After Effects and cleaned it up, added some texturing, did some time remapping, and just did some final touches on top of it. And then finally, it really needed some nice sound design. I had a general idea of what I wanted, so I linked up with my pal Landon Trimble, who really knocked this one out of the park. I sent him some basic song ideas of what I kind of pictured, and he nailed it. And one of my favorite parts about this is how on that second little burst that I mentioned, he adds a really nice kind of like, a crescendo moment, which you can hear right here. It's just very good. So one little quick tip is that for any marketplace, I'm just gonna use Super Rare as an example. Even though Super Rare, you do need to get uh, accepted to, to sell on this marketplace. Not all marketplaces require you to get accepted to. Some are open to everybody. You can find out which ones in my previous video, link in the description. So on a marketplace that you're selling or buying, you need to connect a wallet like MetaMask. So when you wanna tokenize artwork, you basically, I'm assuming they all look something like this and you will upload all of your artwork so once you have all the information for your artwork ready to go and you go to issue a token and you agree to everything, yes, 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 and you begin the, the tokenization that's gonna happen, you need to confirm or reject what is the gas fee. Now the gas fee, you're basically, you're just paying for the miners who are running the Ethereum network. You're just paying for them to execute this transaction, in this case, to mint the NFT. And the gas fees are, at this time, they're always changing, they're always fluctuating, and they're pretty high right now. So this, at this time, it's $74. So I'm just gonna go ahead and reject this because this is an example. And I've paid anywhere from $20 to $150 to 
mint artwork. There are a lot of things coming in the pipeline to change this, to make gas prices more stable, to make gas prices lower, to reduce the energy costs associated with Ethereum. These are all things that the developers are aware of and are fixing and are working on and are coming soon. But in the meantime, I recommend um, checking something like Gas Now. You can get a Chrome extension and you can monitor what the gas prices are at any time. So I use this, you can go on gasnow.org and you can see what what current gas prices are. So right now you can see the gas price is around $4. These are not gonna be reflective exactly of what you would pay to mint because minting is gonna cost more, but they are relative. So a lower gas price is gonna be a lower cost to mint artwork. You can also check average gas prices at any time of the day. Peak hours are gonna have higher costs. So you can just kind of keep an eye on these and see what looks like a high cost, what looks like a low cost, and then try to mint on the lower end. All right, that is about it for this video. I hope you liked it. Let me know if you did. Leave a comment if you wanna see more like this in the future. Uh, let me know, and I will do so. All right, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.